Welcome back. Uh, I hope you had a good weekend. Um, I hope you've had a chance to check out the homework. The homework's due tomorrow. Uh, it's on the class website. Check it out. Let me know if you have any questions about it. I'd be happy to help out. Um, let's talk about the board account. That's what we were talking about at the end last time. I just wanted to do one more not so simple example. This actually is the example from the handout that I gave out on the first day. And I would like to try to find the winner using the Borda count. This is the one where you um, assign points based on you know where each person was ranked on each of the ballots, and then you add up all the points. So I hope you remember the way the Borda works. The points uh, always go um, zero for last place, and then increasing by one. So if there are four alternatives, then the points go three, two, one, zero. If there are only two alternatives, it would be just two, one, zero, right? You always start at zero at the bottom, and then you get one more point per ranking as you go up. All right, and the board, uh, as far as like the arithmetic goes, is the most complicated. You have to multiply and add to get the answer correctly. So the way, uh, the way it goes is the, let's start with A, right? I'm gonna look across these columns here. And in the first column, I have 14 voters who put A uh, in the three point position. So as far as the points from the first one, it's 14 times three. That's because there were 14 voters in the first column and they are giving three points each to this candidate A. So they get 14 times three from the first column and then plus, I'm gonna to add together numbers like that for each column. The next column has 10 up top. 10 people give zero points. So actually this is 10 times zero plus. Um, actually everybody else is giving zero. So just to write it out completely, although you don't really have to write this stuff, but just so it's clear what I'm doing. I'm adding, uh, really each time you are multiplying the number up top times the number of points according to the positioning of the A. All right, and then you gotta add all this together. You know, uh, something like this I would say use your calculator although it's a bunch of zeros. It is 14 times three. I did this at a time on my calculator. I got 42 as the answer for that. That's 14 times three. I, I suppose I probably do that in my head. I don't know. Any questions about that, how we did it? I hope that looks all right. So for B, it's gonna look more interesting, a lot less zeros, maybe no zeros. Uh, for B, I have, again, 14 voters giving two points each. So I go 14 times two this time, plus 10 times Two, right? That's because the 10 voters in the second column are giving two points each. Plus uh, eight from the next column times the position of the B here is in the one point position. So that's eight times one. Plus the next column is four voters, give them three points. Plus the last column is one voter, gives them one point. And then those numbers, you got to add them up. These I did before I came. 69 is what I got from those numbers. Yes? Wait, could you just explain how you got the points again? Yeah, so the points are according to which position the B is in. So oh. in this, uh, in the first column, B is getting two points because it's in the second position. Okay. This column, it's two points. Here it's one point. Here it's three points. Okay. Here it's one point. Yeah. Thank you. All right, let's continue. So you just got to do this for, for each of them. It's not so hard to do. You got to just kind of keep it straight and make sure you are being careful about everything. So I get 14 times one this time. In the first column, C is getting one point plus in the second column, 10 people times three points for C in the second column. In the third column, it's eight times uh, two because C is in the two point position. In the fourth column, it's four times one. And then in the last column, one times three. I hope you get something like that. Add these up, you get 67. And then D, I go 14 times zero from the first column. D gets a one point in the second column, so that's 10 times one. Three points in the third column, that's eight times three. Two points in the fourth column, that's four times two. And then two points in the last column, one times two. Add these up and I get 44. And so the answer is B. B wins with the uh, Borda. All right, this is how we do the Borda. 
Any questions about that? You're going to do some of these on the homework. Yeah. Um, what happens, like, it's not just him, but what happens if two scores are the same? Um, like yeah, so it is possible to get a tie with the border. And then I guess you just have to say it's a tie. This is true in, in any of the systems that we talk about, like the plurality system. Remember, that's the one where you only consider the, the first position rankings. It's impossible to get a tie in that also. Um, yeah, sometimes you get a tie. And really, there's nothing you can do about that. All right. Excellent. Thank you for those. Um, I wanted to do one more example. Like so far, um, what we've talked about, we have three systems, right? We have plurality. That's the one where you consider only the first, the first position rankings. We also have the Condorcet method. This is where you do a bunch of pairwise comparisons and see who wins all the pairwise comparisons. It's possible there is no winner for the Condorcet method. And then we have the Borda, right? There's one more uh, major system that we're going to talk about, although I don't think we're going to get to it today. I wanted to do one more big example involving these three and figure out the winner with each of those three. This is what uh, a lot of the homework is about. And it's going to be, I got another handout. Can you believe it? I'm going to do this so that I don't infect you, although I don't, I don't think I'm infectable, infectious. I am infectable. Um, I got results from the voting for the best movie ever. Remember that? This is going to be great. What I want to do is decide the winner using each of those three different systems and see what happens. Now, this is going to be probably the biggest, nastiest example of these that you're ever going to do. Just because there were a lot of different um, different voters, different columns. I hope everybody got one. Everybody got one? All right. I have one of these in my screen, too. OK. These are the results of the voting from this section. Actually, the other section had a different bunch of uh, results. But one thing that I did just to make it a little bit easier to count this up is, here's my answers. Um, if you uh, count up just across the top, those numbers across the top, you will see there are 37 total voters. Sorry, 34, not 30. 37 is that, that handout one. I mean the other one. 34 total voters. That means that um, half of that is 17. So when it comes to deciding if it's between two candidates, you need 18 to win. 17 is a tie, right? I'll just write that. 17 is half of that. All right. That's just going to help us to decide things. OK, I want to do the plurality is, is always going to be the easiest to do. I want to do the plurality, the Condorcet, and the Borda. All right, let's see if we can do it. First of all, the plurality. You can just write on the paper if you want, or you can write it into your notes. Please bring this paper um, in the future because, like I said, we, there are other methods that we're going to talk about, and I want to try and do them for this, this big example also. Anyway, the easiest one is going to be the plurality. Remember, that's the one where you only consider the first place rankings, and you just count up how many does each of these get how many times do they appear in the first position? All right, so for the F, which is Forrest Gump, how many times does the F appear in the top position? That would be these four times, right? Just the first four columns, F is on top. How many votes exactly is that? Well, if I were to write it out, it's three and three and four and one, right? So how many is that? That's uh, 11. So, Forrest Gump has 11 votes in the top position. All right? And then we just look at the other ones and see. So, for H is um, 10 things I hate about you. It's these two columns, the 1 and the 8. So, H gets 1 plus 8, which is 9. I, interstellar, 3 and 1 and 2. That's 6, right? 3 plus 1 plus 2 is 6. And then T. 2 and 4 and 1 is 7. 
All right. And so the winner using the plurality system, you just look at who got the most, and that would be the F in this case. F wins using the plurality system. All right. And I guess um, I, interstellar, is the worst using the plurality system. All right. This is the easiest uh, of the three methods. Any questions about that? I hope that you feel good about the plurality system. OK, let's try the Condorcet method. This is going to involve quite a bit more sort of looking carefully and adding stuff up. Um, in this case, we need to do all the pairs, right? I go F versus uh, H, and then I'm going to do F versus I, and then I'm going to do F versus T, and then I'm going to do H versus I. There should be six pairs, H versus T, and finally I versus T, right? Yes? Can you just explain what the Condorcet like, means? Yeah, it means you compare each of the pairs of candidates. There are four total candidates in this case, the F, the H, the I, and the T. And we're going to make all possible ways of matching them up one-on-one. -on -one. And I just wrote them all down. There are six possible ways to do that. And then, in each of those, um, we are going to compare only those two candidates which one, with one another, ignoring everybody else, and see who would have won. So when it's F versus H, I look at the whole chart here, but I only am looking at Fs and Hs. And I see how many times is F above H versus how many times is H above F, all right? So let's just count up how many times the F is on top. If it's just between F and H, how many times the F is on top? Maybe I will, I will sort of circle. You know, here the F is on top. Here the F is above the H. I'm just looking, is the F above the H or not? Here it's not. Uh, here it is. Here it's not. There it's not. Here it is. Here it is, right? These are all the times when the F is above the H, if I just ignore everybody else, just looking at F and H. Sometimes the F is above, sometimes it's not, right? Here are all the times when the F is above the H. And how many is that? So I add up those numbers. It would be I mean, looking over here, it's 3 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 3 and 2 and 2 and 1, whatever that is. I add those up. How many numbers put the F above the H? So just to write all that out, it's 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, all right? I will reiterate, this is, this is like the biggest, nastiest example we're ever going to do of these. Just because there's a lot of columns, which means you have to kind of do a lot of work to uh, arrive at the answer. But anyway, if we add all of those numbers up, that's 11, uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I believe. And 19, remember I said before, 17 would be a, would be a tie, so 19 is enough to win. Now, you could, you could count up the number of times H is above, but it's a little easier to only count one of them and just see, if, do they meet the do they make it to, um, you know, 17 is half. So if they make it to 18, then they win. If not, then they don't win. So in this case, F wins. I'm going to circle the F there, all right? They got to 19 votes, which is enough to win in this, uh, in this election. Any questions about that? This is a bit of a pain. You got to look, uh, you know, look carefully. I'm going to. So now we go through that whole business again. I now look only considering Fs and Is. How many times is F on top? How many times is I on top? It looks to me like F is on top uh, in this column, this column, this column, this column. All, so all four of the, the first columns, because F is on top there. So that's three and three and four and one. And then I'm looking for F above I. F is not above I in these ones, which have I on the top. With the H on the top, F is above I here and also here. So that's a one and an eight. And then in the last column, F is above I in this one. That's a 4. Uh, F is not there, so I go plus a 4. And I add these numbers together. Add them up. I get 11, 12, uh, 24, I believe. Anybody agree? I, I am likely to mess these numbers up from time to time. Yeah? I think there's only 33 voters. Really? I could have messed that up. 30, does anybody agree with that? This is 10, 11. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
26, 28, 32, 33. Yeah, I agree. Any, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, so let me, uh, I'm going to change my mind here. 33. I don't think that actually matters to what I'm doing. So 17 is not half. 17 will win it, right? 17 is a, a majority. Sorry about that. I was doing these numbers this morning, and I probably messed up more than more than that. We'll see as we uh, as we go on. All right. So let me just finish what I was saying here. Um, in this one, I think I did this right. F is above I 24 times. That's enough to win. You need 17 in order to win here. So F is the winner in that comparison also. Yes? I was just going to say, I thought the first one was a total of 22. The first one adds up to 22? Maybe. I could be wrong. But... Uh, this is 10, and then 11, and then that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I think it's 19. Oh. Anybody else have an opinion? This is very easy to mess them up, so... Um, Please feel free to be suspicious of my answers at all times. All right, let's continue. Um, maybe uh, let's do the next one together, and I, I want you guys to try the next three and see if uh, I hope that you are understanding what I'm doing here. All right, F, F versus T. Uh, F is in the top position in the first three, uh, four columns, so that's a three and a three and a four and a one. And then F uh, versus T, I see F is above T here. That's three more. Next, uh, T is above F, T is above F. F is above T here, which is one more. And then T is on top on all the other ones. So that's it. This would be 10, 11, 14, 15, which is not enough to win. So that means T wins this comparison. All right, because 15 is below the, you need 17 to win here. All right, et cetera. Can you guys see if, see if you can get the other ones? When I, I will, uh, I'll tell you what numbers I got when I did it. Well, I'll tell you after you two do them. Try them out, see what you think. I'm gonna walk around and make sure that everybody is clear on what exactly you're looking for here. You gotta look carefully. Looks like everybody knows what's up. Oops. 
All right, let's chat about the uh, Condorcet. So when I added these up in the fourth one, uh, H versus I, I got H winning with 22 votes. And so H was the winner in that case. Um, in H versus T, I counted 13 for H, which is not enough to win. So that means T wins that one. And then in I versus T, I counted nine for I, which again is not enough, not even close. And so T was the winner for that one. I hope that people agree. Do it. Anybody agree with my numbers? Yes, all right, great. So um, what's your conclusion then for the Condorcet winner? Remember, you're looking for one of these candidates who wins in every of their comparisons. Is there anybody? Uh, the Titanic wins. The T, yeah, the Titanic wins here. King of the world. All right, so the, um, remember, it is possible that there is no winner with the, uh, with the Condorcet method, but it, in this case, there is. So that means that when you compare them one at a time, uh, the Titanic is preferable to any other winner, all right? Even though we, when used plurality, uh, Forrest Gump wins. This is uh, a little strange, you get different answers both times, but what are you gonna do? That's just the way it works, all right? And let's try the Borda. Anybody into the Borda? This is extremely uh, tedious to do. Maybe we'll just do one of these just because I find it pretty, uh, pretty annoying to do the whole Borda here. Although I hope that you could do it like if you really had to. Uh, I did this this morning and it took me a few minutes uh, to add it all up. But um, the points will go 0, 1, 2, 3, right? I hope that's big enough to see. And then we just got to add everything up. So let's do the F. When I do the board of points, remember I am multiplying. You multiply the number at the top of the column times the point value from wherever the F appears. So I'm going to do 3 times 3 for the first column, 3 times 3 again for the next column, and then 4 times 3 for the next column, and then 1 times 3. Those are the first four columns in which F is getting three points. You multiply the number up top times the uh, points. And in the first four columns, it's three points every time for F. The next column is a three up top, and F is getting two points. So next I go th plus uh, three times two. And then I go plus one times zero. That's because the next column had zero points for F. And then I'm looking at the column with the two up top. Gives me one point, so that's two times one. The next column has a one up top with two points, one times two. The next column has the eight on top with one point. And then I got a two times two, and then I got a four times one, and then I got a one times one, all right? This is a real pain. If you're using Borda in the real world, you should use a computer to add these numbers up because there's gonna be a lot of numbers to add up, all right? Um, I put this into my calculator. Uh, if you're using the, like a very simple calculator, like, the, like the, the stock calculator in your phone, make sure that you are respecting the proper order of operations. You can't just type it in exactly like that unless you have a, like a scientific calculator. So if I were using a very simple calculator, I would first do the multiplications. That's not six, that's nine plus nine. These are easy enough for me to do in my head. Plus three, plus six, plus zero, plus two, plus two, plus eight. I'm just multiplying first. And then I would add those up on my, on my calculator. And I got, when I did this, 57. Anybody agree with that? I don't know, some, some people were trying to do this ahead of time or before. I got 57 when I added those all up. Are there any questions about? I got 60. You got 60? Did you get the same numbers that I wrote? I'm not 100% confident about this. Uh, maybe, oh, I can see actually, I can see on my paper I left out a three. She got 60, I'm going with her. Thank you for that. I was just gonna tell you my other three answers. Anybody have an opinion about this? 57 versus 60, anybody else got 60? All right, it sounds like 60 is the consensus. Um, I was just gonna tell you the answers to the other ones, although at this point you might not believe me, but uh, let's just pretend that I did it all correctly, which may not be right. Um, when I did these others, can I just say the others are similar? 
All right, you can work them out uh, if you'd like to, see if you agree with my answers. What I got was H, I got 49. I, I got 27. And T, I got 62. Anybody have an opinion about those? If you disagree, I don't want to talk about it. You're, you're probably right. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I hope that we could all work this out if we really had to and uh, get it right after a few tries. All right? Anyway, if you believe these numbers, it appears that T is the winner with the Borda. All right? This is how we do the Borda. Like I said, this is the most complicated example that we're ever going to do. So if you felt like this was like way too hard, um, I agree. I mean, I got it wrong. It's not, it's not really hard in the abstract sense. It's just easy to mess it up. I hope that that's how you feel about it. All right. Any, uh, any questions or thoughts about that? OK, we're going to come back to this. Uh, so it looks to me, how would I, how would I summarize uh, as far as like we as a group of people, which movie do we really think is the best? I mean, I would say it, it's a strong showing for Titanic, all right? Although, Forrest Gump wins the plurality, uh, but um, if you, I would say the plurality is kind of a, a simple surface measurement, whereas I would say the Condorcet and the Borda are a little bit deeper, or they give a little bit more nuance to them. Because, for example, this, uh, I mean, the fact that Titanic is the Condorcet winner means actually more of us prefer the Titanic better than Forrest Gump. Um, so in particular, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say that Forrest Gump should be the winner, even though, yes, they did win using the plurality system. All right. Great. Okay, let's uh, get back. I'm going to go back to my other, my other page here. That's the same one. Here. All right. These are the three systems that we've discussed so far. Condorcet, plurality, and the Borda. They all, on their surface, seem like reasonable systems. Like, none of them seems just like a ridiculous idea. I think they're all very natural things that if you, um, if you describe to somebody, you, you know, describe them the Borda system and say, does that make sense? Like, does that sound like a decent way to do it? They'd say, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Uh, the board is how they do it in Mario Kart, right? And nobody looks at that and says, wow, that's ridiculous. You should never do it that way. You say, oh, all right. They add up the points. Okay. That sounds, sounds good, I guess. Um, which one's really better, though? This is what I would like to talk a bit about. Which method is better? Uh, Based on what I've said so far, you can probably guess. I'm not actually going to give a simple answer to this question. There is no really uh, simple answer to this question. In the real world, we use the plurality system in our politics, although that might be due just to sort of historical cultural reasons rather than mathematical reasons. Um, I think especially considering you know the fact that our, our voting system has been in use for 300 years, you don't want in, say, the 1790s, you don't want to use a system which requires a computer to compute the answer. Um, the plurality system, if nothing else, is very easy to count up the votes and determine who the winner is. So that is a big, ver uh, is a big factor in favor of the plurality system, although that, as a reason to do it that way, is kind of obsolete. At this point, we are counting the votes by computer anyway, so we might as well if we wanted to use a more sophisticated system, the fact that it's more complicated to compute the answer is not a problem at all in the modern world, although that may be a big factor about why we use the plurality. Anyway, the question of which is better, um, when it comes to answering that question, really the natural response is, it depends what you mean by better, all right? And so what we want to talk about is we'll uh, discuss various criteria for judging. Various criteria. As far as which method is better, the answer is something like, well, it depends on what you think, what counts as better, or what exactly are you looking for that makes it better or not. You know, the plurality system is easy to do without using a calculator. Is that really important? I would say that's not so important in the modern world anymore. It was important in the past. Um, 
there are more uh, more interesting or more like <coughs> meaningful criteria that we're going to use to judge whether these things are better. And for today, in our next 20 minutes, I want to talk about two different criteria, and we're actually going to talk about more as we go on in the class, but two criteria based on um, the sort of general idea. I'm going to write sort of a vague idea at this point, general idea. The general idea is a system is good, or one, if I want to know if one is better than the other, I want to know, is it really going to choose the person who most people like the best? I mean, that's, that's the point of a voting system. You're supposed to choose the option that in some way most of the people like the best. So um, based on the general idea of a good system should choose a solid popular candidate, right? Like if there is, I mean, if the election is really close, then it's hard to say who you should choose. But if there really is some candidate who's like, everybody really likes them better, a good system ought to pick that one as the winner, all right? And there are two different ways that we could formulate that. The first one is a very, and these, these different criteria have, have names, all right? The first one is called the majority criterion. Criterion is the singular of criteria. The majority criterion. What I'm about to say is basically, if actually a majority of the voters prefer somebody, then they should win, all right? As you know, it's usually not the case that a majority, majority means more than 50%, they don't, there isn't always a, a majority who prefers somebody. But if there really is, then that person should be the winner. So I'm gonna say, if there is a candidate who ranks um, first place on a majority of ballots. Majority, remember, means more than 50%. Then they should win the election. All right. If there's a candidate who, wins, who is first place on a majority of the ballots, then they should be the winner. This is one way to say that a system is fair or not. You should think, well, if it's a fair system, then probably it should behave in this way. If a majority of people put somebody up top, they should be the winner. All right. This is called the majority criterion. And we could talk about, does the plurality system have this property? Uh, and does the board account system have this property? Does the Condorcet system have this property? This is the kind of questions that we're going to ask. But I said I was going to give you two different criterion. This is the first one, the majority criterion. And the second one, there's another way to talk about a candidate being really strong, and that is the Condorcet winner thing. If a candidate is a Condorcet winner, then probably they should win the election too. That's another way to judge the fairness, and this is called the Condorcet winner criterion. Condorcet winner criterion. And I'm always going to write CWC, the Condorcet winner criterion. It says, if there is a Condorcet winner, then they should be the winner of the election. If there is a Condorcet winner, remember that means there, if there really is somebody who is preferred in all of the pairwise matchups, who wins all the pairwise matchups, then they should win the election. All right, so these are, you could say, two different ways of judging whether a system is fair or not. Does it appropriately treat a majority candidate? Does it make them win? And also, does it make a Condorcet winner win? And I feel like a good system should, should satisfy both of these properties. Um, that's, you know, that's how I feel at least. All right, these are desirable properties. So I wanted, I'll, I'll just say we would like a system that we're using uh, to satisfy both of these, right?
that would mean that our system is, is somehow correctly interpreting whether or not somebody is a preferred candidate. All right? If you get a majority in the first position, you should probably win. And then also, if you're a Condorcet winner, you should probably win. All right? So let's talk about, does our, our three systems that we've discussed so far, do they have these two properties? Um, we would like a system to satisfy both of these. So are they satisfied by you know, uh, the three we've talked about so far? Plurality, uh, Condorcet, Borda. Are these two properties satisfied for these? And let's talk about the plurality, first of all. Does the plurality system satisfy the majority criterion? This is what I want to talk about. So let's look at plurality. The majority criterion, all right? Remember what the majority means? I want to try and think about, is it true in the plurality system what the majority said? The majority says, if a candidate gets uh, top ranking on a majority, then they should win. Is that really true if we use the plurality system? Anybody have a feeling about this? If you are using the plurality system and there is some candidate who is ranked at the top by a majority of the voters, are they going to win the uh, election with the plurality? I see some nodding heads. The answer is yes, they are, because the plurality is done by counting up the top votes. That's how the plurality system works. And so if there really was somebody who is on the top position in a majority of the ballots, then they are going to win the plurality system. So I'm going to try and write something like that. This would be a decent sort of uh, you know, test question or something. Explain to me why the plurality system satisfies the majority criterion. It's because if you're using the plurality system, I'll say in the plurality <coughs> system, all you do is count up the first position votes, right? The winner, um, the, uh, how about we count the number of top rankings, right? The number of times that a candidate appears in the top position. So if they have a majority in the top position, they will get the most uh, votes in the plurality. All right, so they will win if we use the plurality system. So to, to uh, summarize what I just said, so the plurality does satisfy, satisfy the majority criterion. All right? This is a good thing for the plurality system. It means that if there really is a candidate who a majority likes the best, they, they're going to win. And this is what we, this, we feel like this is how it should work in the real world. All right? The plurality system does satisfy the majority criterion. All right? Uh, what, maybe I'll give you a little, a little heads up where I'm going to go with this. We're eventually going to make sort of a giant chart that says something like, I got the plurality system, I got the Condorcet system, I got the Borda, and then which of these different ways of judging do they satisfy, right? And we just demonstrated that the plurality does satisfy the majority criterion. Eventually I'm going to try and make like a big chart that says this voting system is, is good in this and this and this way, maybe it's not good in this and this and this way, that's the kind of thing that we're looking for here a big chart of evaluating whether these systems do or do not satisfy this or that different judgment of how uh, of fairness, all right? Um, 
Anyway, what about the Condorcet winner criterion? Let's talk about that. So does plurality satisfy Condorcet winner criterion? That means if there's an election and there really is a Condorcet winner, do they automatically become the winner if we use the plurality system? Anybody have an opinion about this? <coughs> nope. I see, I see some no's. Why not? We have a, can you say what? Because being the Condorcet winner does not guarantee that you were the popular. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you got the most votes in the first position. Actually, I think we've seen that already in the examples. Like, it wasn't the, the Forrest Gump, right? The Forrest Gump was the plurality winner but not the Condorcet winner, right, in that example. So the answer here is no. The reason is because sometimes a Condorcet winner can lose if we use plurality, right? This happened in the movie's example. This also happened in the bush gore Nader thing, right? Gore was the Condorcet winner in that election. But the plurality winner was somebody else. So the plurality system does not always make the Condorcet winner win the election. So I'm going to put a big old X right here. The plurality system does not satisfy the Condorcet winner criterion. All right? So your, uh, your interpretation of this chart so far is the plurality system is kind of OK, but not, not perfect. I mean, that's, that's the way that I think of this. Uh, what we've talked about so far. All right. Any thoughts about that? All right. The plurality does not satisfy the Condorcet winner. Uh, let's talk about the Borda. I think we have enough time to talk about Borda in these two categories. Um, what about Borda? Borda and majority and the Condorcet winner criterion. Uh, the Condorcet, actually, we can talk about that. That's a little easier to handle. Think about the examples that we've done so far. If you had a Condorcet winner, are they always going to win if I use the Borda? Now, in the movie's example, the Titanic was the Condorcet winner, and they were also the winner with the Borda. But is that, is that guaranteed? If you are the Condorcet winner, you're automatically going to win with the Borda? Um, actually, there's not a guarantee of that, and in fact, um, our uh, the big handout from the first day, the 37 voters, our 37 voters election. Um, I don't know if you if you remember how we did this each time. A win, wins the plurality. Uh, B wins the Borda. That's what we we started off with. But C is the uh, Condorcet winner. And so you can see it is possible that, sorry, I'm off the bottom. It is possible that the Condorcet winner uh, might lose if you're using the Borda. And that means Borda does not satisfy the Condorcet winner criterion, all right? Sometimes there is a Condorcet winner who still loses with the Borda. So <coughs> Borda, the Borda count does not satisfy the CWC, all right? So I'm going to go up and fill in that, that little chart there. I'm going to put an X under Borda and the Condorcet winner criterion. It is not satisfied. I skipped a, I skipped a row here. We'll fill that in probably next time. Um, could you repeat why it doesn't satisfy? Yeah, so remember, Condorcet winner criterion, it means if there is a Condorcet winner, they should win the election. But if you use Borda, it is possible to have a Condorcet winner who doesn't win the election. And it, it, that happened in this example here, the, the handout from the first day, um, which we did at the beginning today, I think before you made it, made it back. The Borda um, winner was B, even though C was the Condorcet winner. So if you're using Borda, it might not always choose the Condorcet winner as the winner of the election, all right? Not great as far as Borda goes. What about majority? All right, that means if there is a candidate who is actually ranked top by a majority, so I wanna talk about Borda and majority now. 
Remember, majority means if some candidate is top ranked by a majority, then they should win the election. What I want to think about is, does that really happen with Borda? Remember, Borda is the one where you add up the points. If somebody's on the top position in a majority of the ballots, does that automatically make them have the most points? This is what you've got to think about. If you're on the top on a majority, does that mean you're automatically going to get the most points? You should feel like it's not obvious. I mean, maybe that's true, but it could be that you're on the top on a majority, but you're like all the way at the bottom of the other ones, and then somebody else somehow managed to get more points because of that. And actually, that can happen. So the answer here is, this is not satisfied. It's because I have to, I'm going to demonstrate this by an example here. Check it out. If I have, this is not all that complicated. Here's an example. Let's say three people vote like that, A, B, C, and two people said B, C, A. Is there a candidate who gets a majority of rankings in the top position? Yes, it is A, right? In this case, whoa, sorry, what happened? So here, A is top ranked by a majority, right? So according to the, my, the majority criterion, uh, we feel like A should be the winner of the election. But actually, if you add up the points here, you will see that A doesn't win. If I add up the points, they go 0, 1, 2, right? And the points says, so if I do the border, uh, A gets 3 times 2 plus zero, uh, 2 times 0. 0 points from the second column, that's uh, 6. Whereas B gets 3 times 1 plus 2 times 3. That's 3 plus 6, which is 9. How do you like me now? And C doesn't get much, right? C gets 3 times 0 plus 2 times 1. That's 2. But anyway, what I'm saying is B wins. Even though A is actually marked in the first position by a majority of the voters. This is something that's kind of weird about the border, but it's, it's true. Even though A is best in the opinion of the, the majority, B still manages to win with the border. All right? Yeah? Wait, so why would it be two times three? Oh, I missed the number of, yeah, sorry. It's still gonna work though. It's, it adds up to seven, not nine. Thank you. It's two times two here, which is seven. It's still true that B wins. You'll see, I usually have the idea right. I just mess up the numbers. That's the kind of guy I am. All right, so the conclusion is the border does not even satisfy the majority. This is a big kind of bad thing about the border. It does not satisfy the majority. <laughs>